There's a few important things that need to be addressed when it comes to wishing in 1.6 update, and these are the 5 considerations you don't want to miss out on. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Dragon Raja, a fantasy MMO that features some of the most advanced social systems you could ever think of for a mobile game. Be whoever and play however you want. From a career system where you can become a star Michelin chef or a shop owner, to a family life where you can have a baby that can later on join you in your epic fights. And there's a whole world that's out there for you to explore, so you can always find balance between the fighting and having a social life in this one-of-a-kind MMO. And the game is currently celebrating its newest update that introduces Couples Home feature. Go on a real estate hunt with your loved one and get yourself a new lovely house that you can build and customize to your heart's content. Pick the best location for your home and enjoy the natural environment that's surrounding it. And this is just one of many updates. There's also the marriage system that got added recently, as well as a new phantom sound class. So pick your character, customize it however you want, and explore this massive MMO. You will also be helping out the channel a lot by checking out the game and its newest update, so make sure to click on the download link below the video and download Dragon Raja now. When you look at Clay's rerun, it's hard to ignore the lawyer in the room, and while it's not the most fair thing to do when it comes to comparing her with Yenfei, they sure do share quite a few similarities between each other. And it's not just the fact both of them are purely focused on pyro damage, but they also share the same weapon type and even have similar playstyle that's based around charged attacks. So when we saw the announcement of Clay's rerun banner, a question popped into our heads. What is the biggest difference between Clay and Yenfei, but more importantly, if looking purely from a gameplay perspective, does it make sense to summon for Clay if you already have have Yenfei. Well, first things first, nobody should tell you which characters you should wish for, because each of us appreciate different aspects about them, but there are a few factors worth looking into. Now, if you ask which one does better damage, the answer would be very complicated and it heavily depends on what other characters you have built and would use in a team composition, but from the experience gathered so far, it's clear that Yenfei definitely struggles with stamina issues if you haven't unlocked her first constellation, which isn't the worst thing, but it definitely feels like a day and night difference when you play with her at zero constellation while Klee works perfectly right out of the box, which is something you would expect from a 5-star character. On the other hand, one common criticism you will hear from players would be that Klee's animations, especially the charge attack, can feel sluggish at times, and it could be a deal-breaker for some, but to remedy this situation, since she's going to show up pretty soon, using her in a trial run should give you a good enough idea if you will enjoy that kind of animation style. Still, they are from the pyro element, which means owning few of them from this particular element, and actually spending the resources building them up won't hurt you the least bit, since Pyro is stupidly good inside the Spiral Abyss if that's something you care about. But that's really the biggest factors you could consider when comparing the two Pyro damage dealers, and they are each excellent in their own way. Talking about Pyro characters isn't always the most exciting thing, since most of us already know how insanely useful that element is in the game, but when it comes to Animo, it's usually not the element that emphasizes the character, but their skill set. And it looks like Kazuha is going to be taking some of the talents from other Animo characters and creating his own playstyle. A little bit of Jean, a dash of Venti, and a pinch of Xiao, and you've got yourself a new character brewing. And from the information that was gathered from both Chinese and English livestreams, it was quite clear that Mihoyo is presenting this samurai boy is the next support character. And it's honestly refreshing to see this, since the last time we saw a proper support character besides Ganyu, who is on a godlike level of being master of everything, it was actually Albedo before her that acted as a true wingman for her destructive endeavors. In fact, one cool thing a lot of people seem to have missed was that Kazuha will be utilizing the elemental absorption we saw from the previews, so this means Verdes and Venerir's set, as well as the mass application of an element of your choosing, can lead to great results, especially if you're running melt or vaporize teams. Now obviously, the rest of the stuff like damage multipliers and stats are not going to be revealed until he shows up after Glee's banner, so it's probably safe to say if you're looking for a new 5-star support character to add to your roster, he's definitely going to be an interesting choice. Still, if you're saving up for him in particular, he's going to be put into a weird spot where you can use the next update details as the leverage for your final decision. And this actually brings us to the next part. You could talk and compare characters all day long, but the fact we have been shown a sneak preview of Inazuma twice now should be a sign that our Primo gems could be in danger big time. Think about it, we're getting a new archipelago zone and Ayaka is talking about having some tea once we arrive at Inazuma, so unless Mihoyo is expecting us to ignore these things, it's clear they are putting in more effort into hyping up the new upcoming region, which also means Kazuha is just the tip of the iceberg for all the other awesome characters we're expecting to see, like Ayaka and the mysterious Electro 
Archon, and this is basically addressing the fact that Mondstadt and Leoe characters have distinct regional appearances, and for some players, obtaining a character from a new region could be an exciting thing, which is why we're already getting a small preview of what's to come with Kazuha's arrival. But the key indicator here is that this beautiful samurai is going to be sharing a window between 1.6 subdate and 1.7 preview, which basically means if you're able to resist the temptation of wishing on him on day one, you will then be able to have more insight on what's to come with 1.7 update. So in essence, if you're trying to stay conscious about your Primo Gems management, just take it slow with the spending and hold on to them, and see what Mihoyo reveals mid-July if everything goes according to their regular update schedule. Whether you're saving up or letting loose all those primos, it's always interesting to discuss the pros and cons of the upcoming banners. Well, at least in this case, we don't have much going on for the contents yet. But if it comes down to asking yourself the question, which one of the upcoming characters to go for, then there's a few things worth talking about. First, we need to get this out of the way and address the role situation in gacha games. It's a common philosophy to favor support characters when it comes to long-term value, because no matter how hard a damage dealer hits, the next one can always do better if the developers decided. And unless you're planning to obtain Klee's fourth constellation, she's basically locked into a dedicated damage dealer role, which means not only you get less flexible team compositions, but they also need to be built around her to maximize her potential, while on the other hand, someone as Kazuha, we don't have much info about, but it's kinda obvious from the way his skill and burst was showcased. At worst case scenario, he's a sub-damage dealer, but more than likely, he will act as an animal support that will take advantage of three mechanics, elemental absorption, enemy grouping, and deploy damage field from the burst. It's also easier to build support characters even after we're getting close to a year since Genshin's release, because the painful experience of trying to get those substats for your damage dealer is not the most pleasant thing out there, while slapping on few of the best of the worst artifacts onto a support is a perfectly acceptable thing to do. But at the end of the day, every player is going to be a unique position and there is no catch-all solution. However, Klee is definitely an excellent damage dealer that's been tested and evaluated by many players and theory crafters, so it's kind of clear where she stands in in terms of our powers, but since Kazuha himself is more of an enigma right now when it comes to his damage multipliers and stats, if you're someone new who needs a strong character, wishing on the Explosive Girls banner could be a nice start, but for those who have been grinding the game for a while now, more or less know about their situation and what they actually need, which, let's be honest, most of the time falls to the compulsive decision making when a new banner drops. With everything that has been mentioned so far, if we take all things we have seen at face value and assume there will be no surprises in the update, we ultimately end up in a weird situation if we were to decide which banner to go for, even if we still do not know what the future 4 stars are going to be. But the biggest shade of doubt that's been cast is the 1.7 update that will show us the next batch of new characters, which we have to assume at this point are going to be the residents of Inazuma, or at least some of them. So leaving aside that inside of knowledge before wishing on Kazuha's banner is the safe choice to go for if you don't care for Klee in particular. This is, all of course, based on the assumption that you're a free-to-play player or a light spender, since even if Genshin likes to give away a good number of primo gems, if you're not even on a guaranteed pity of a 5-star, these wishing sessions can get pretty draining. Now, one last thing that kind of didn't get mentioned throughout the video are the newest upcoming weapons, but from the past experience, this isn't something the majority of the player base tends to go for, unless you have those rare moments of completely broken weapons like the Staff of Homa, which even during Zhongli's rerun, you would see it on his trial run, as if Muhoi was trying to sweep that Vortex Vanquisher under the rug. So, the four key takeaways of this video about 1.6 banners would be that first, for Klee, there is already a more or less accessible alternative, which is Yenfei, who shares a lot of similarities, even if she does suffer from stamina issues, if you don't have her at first constellation. But it's also important to note, she can appear in the standard banner after 1.6 update. Now, as for Kazuha, while we don't have much info about him, it's clear that he is an amalgamation of borrowed ideas from some other animal characters, and it's definitely going to be interesting to see how this overall playstyle feels, but from the things we saw, he's looking to be the next 5-star support character you can get your hands on. And while we're busy talking about the specs of these characters, it's very possible Inazuma could be lurking around the corner, and the new and exciting character designs could get unveiled as soon as 1.7 update, which is almost guaranteed to get previewed nearing the end of Kazuha's banner. Finally, when it comes down to preference, if you truly care about the expiration date in a PvE game, 
there's a chance more powerful and better pyro characters will replace Klee in the future, while someone like Kazuha is more future-proofed, but that's really something that should only matter if you focus on long-term planning, while in reality, our decision-making goes into the appeal of the character, and the question whether you're able to appreciate all four of their different voiceovers. If you enjoyed watching this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel with bell notifications on, and don't forget to gently press the like button. Thanks and see you next time!